Hi everyone, it's Quicky Baby, and welcome back to World of Tanks, and also welcome back to a possible Game of the Year contender. And if that doesn't set the bar high on this channel, I don't know what does. Today we've got the pleasure of watching Galaxian playing in the very meta AMX M454. This tier 10 French heavy tank has propelled itself up into the echelons of overpowered in World of Tanks. Wargaming thought it was a great idea to buff the rate of fire of this vehicle, buff the accuracy, and also buff the, the gold pen of this tank. They realized this was all a little bit too much, and this vehicle only existed in its outrageously overpowered form for about a month before Wargaming realized in the subsequent patch that they should reduce the health points of this vehicle and also the uh, top speed limit of this tank to file it down a little bit. However, it still remains as this all-purpose grindy tank of destiny. And Galaxian is going to show you exactly why this thing is the best heavy tank in the game right now. Now, you're not actually seeing the AMX M454 in its overpowered form, or crazy overpowered form, that existed in a patch where you just saw hundreds of these inside the matchmaker, usually about two or three in, in most games that you would play in World of Tanks. And, as I said, Wargaming decided to file it down a little bit, lower the top speed and also remove some of the hit points. Galaxian, however, likes their hit points. They're using a Bond durability device on this vehicle, a Bond gun rammer, and also a Bond turbo. And I should also highlight that they've decided to move their shells around. This vehicle gets two flavors of armor-piercing rounds. It gets its standard rounds, and it gets its premium armor-piercing rounds. Now, Galaxian has actually moved their premium rounds to their one key, and their standard rounds to their two key, and so right now, they're doing what I feel is the right balance. If you are trying super hard in a vehicle, and credits aren't really your concern, it's still quite good to take a few regular rounds to be firing at the weekly armored tanks. And now with Intuition, you can always switch out to a gold round really quickly, even in a vehicle like this, with its great rate of fire now to be able to have at least a little bit of economy and it does feel absolutely disgusting when you're shooting at literally glass cannons with only premium rounds in the battle knowing that you're going to end up with like a 50 or 100k loss but who am I to tell people how to spend their money but I like what Galaxian is doing here in fact they had two loadouts for this vehicle at the start that they were cycling through one with full gold and then one with at least about uh, 10 regular rounds that you will, will help you make money, or at least break even in a vehicle like this, if you play it in that way. So, while I've been just chatting and explaining the situation that the AMX M454 is in, Galaxian has been showing uh, all of the strengths of this vehicle. The fact that its frontal armor is just so thick and stupid that unless they manage to get your side, you can just basically wedge the front of the hull. It seems so weird not side scraping as you come round a corner in a vehicle like this, but that's exactly how this tank should be played. You can bounce vehicles like the Progetto, and then that allows you to be able to just dictate the pace around a corner. Now the 257 to, to Galaxian's right just managed to finish off the T10 and then hopefully that should allow Galaxian to be able to get the reload on this 257 and a clean shot to the upper hull there and the tier 9 Soviet heavy tank is no more. Galaxian has blocked 3,200 damage already in this battle. Sure, it's a nice matchup. Sure, he's managed to find a uh, bunch of opponents who aren't willing to fire premium rounds at the front of their vehicle. But that's enough to destroy this vehicle, even with the health boost from the Bond durability device at least one time already. Galaxian has just shown really darn good marksmanship in this game. It's clear that Galaxian is an, uh, an exceptional player with regards to their mouse control. And... They're up to 5,200 damage in the first four minutes of this battle. But this shows you one of those games. It's as close to the unwinnable as you're ever going to get in World of Tanks. Imagine almost single-handedly creating a graveyard in the middle of the map, destroying two or three hit points worth of damage on the enemy team, and your team is still so far down. Oh dear, maybe that was a bit of a cast a curse there, as Galaxian actually fires their first poor shot of the game with the Type 4 Heavy ricocheting the round. And now, in this kind of a situation, we've really got to watch out for the Progetto in this scenario. The Type 4 Heavy now firing gold at Galaxian's front, manages to, unable to go through it. And this is where this big old 130mm allows you to overmatch plates, like on the Progetto, also tracking them down. The Progetto comes around the corner, whiffs a couple of shells, panics, falls back, allows the Type 4 Heavy to tank a shell. The Type 4 Heavy misses a round against Galaxian. And now that Progetto thinks, oh my gosh, this thing hits hard, 
And that's because Wargaming only buffed the big gun, the 130mm on this vehicle. And that was the one that had 560 alpha damage. And now, that's just such a scary amount to have. You're kind of like a Type 4 Heavy, but also a Type 4 Heavy with just great DPM as well. And previously, the AMX M454 would not be able to reload quickly here, probably get flanked by the Progetto. But as this is the buffed AMX M454, with also a Bond Rammer, Galaxian shuts down the Tier 10 Italian medium tank. And unfortunately, Galaxian's team fully melts, completely collapses around them. And now, up to 8,000 damage, Galaxian founds themselves in a 1 versus 8 scenario. Okay, so IS-5 takes the first shell, comes around the corner, manages to penetrate with a heat round there on the lower plate of Galaxian, and knocks out Galaxian's radio operator as well, who quickly patches up with a premium medkit. And should be a nice, easy shot here into the top of the Type 4 Heavy. Ooh, I think that was a couple of pixels a little bit too high aim there on the weak point of the Type 4 Heavy. But I think I'm nitpicking. If I was in this situation, my heart would be going like the, the clappers right now in the opportunity that Galaxian has here. They've got a very powerful tank against some very powerful tanks and also powerful players in the form of the AMX M454 and the enemy team is no, no slouch and managed to pick up five kills. But maybe their AMX M454 is a little bit too confident, comes round, ricochets a gold round and Galaxian really wants to focus down the enemy AMX M454 stating I'm the only overpowered French heavy tank in this game removes them from the battle, bounces the Type 4 Heavy, and now the enemies are realizing, uh, maybe we should cap? There seems to be a, a very, very strong player playing an incredibly strong tank in the middle of the map who has reduced this 1 versus 8 now into a 1 versus 6. All right, Galaxian looks for the shot into the Type 4 Heavy underneath the tank. Finally manages to get rid of that Japanese Heavy who marauded them for so long. And the Gorilla, hoping that they've got an opportunity here, kind of goes up the corner but then realizes, uh, I didn't really kind of catch that shot, bud. Okay, so in this situation, should you side scrape? No, you shouldn't. You should just bundle around the corner, expose your lower plate, and that's what this tank does. It puts pressure on its opponents, and its front plate, when angled like this, is disgustingly efficient. And it's not going to bounce everything, especially from that angle, but it puts pressure up on your opponents. And as long as you have good marksmanship to boot, then you will be able to handle them. All right, so Galaxian has done so much butt whoop in this game at 9,700 damage. They only actually have six rounds of ammunition left. Two regular, two premium, and two high explosive rounds as well. Bouncing the 155mm shell there from the T30. Got to be aggressive because they've only got one minute and 45 seconds to get towards the cap. And unfortunately, this T30 is a healthy old vehicle. And it means that Galaxian with these low rolls is not going to be able to remove their hit points probably in three shells unless they high roll here. And they don't. Are you going to ram the T30? Are you going to fire high explosive round? Great choice here to fire an HE round at the T30 to hopefully invest those armor piercing rounds in vehicles with higher amounts of hit points. Galaxian finishes off a side shot on the T30. Now knows the Indian Panzer is most likely still in the cap circles they get hit in the side. The Char Future 4 reduces Galaxian's hit points to 53, bounces one shot off the front, and Galaxian is going to put their final armor piercing round of the battle into the Char Future 4. Now up to just shy of 12,000 damage and nine kills to boot. Galaxian has one minute to get back towards the cap circle, and they need to do it quickly because to all intents and purposes, an STA-1 on the enemy team might be able to join the Indian Panzer inside the cap circle. Now that Indian Panzer took a little bit of a cheeky opportunity to shoot Galaxian in the side, as we saw, while they were engaging the T-30 in the char. And we can clearly see that the durability device is the module that has kept Galaxian in this game. Without using it, Galaxian would be undoubtedly out of this battle. Now we just got to pray that the Indian Panzer is not on many hit points, and we can see that luckily both of the enemy tanks are mortally wounded. Now it's just up to Galaxian to be able to finish them off. But with two tanks on the enemy team and only one remaining shell in their vehicle and an HE shell to boot, this is tense stuff. 15 seconds left on the cap, Galaxian manages to make their way in. Are they going to finish off the Indian Panzer? They bounce around, fire an HE, but it doesn't manage to kill the Indian Panzer. But luckily the Bond Turbo allows Galaxian to be able to ram the German medium tank before they manage to get the side. Galaxian now completely out of ammunition. We see that red zero in the middle of their screen. And that ram actually got them over 12,000 damage. But, oh dear. Yeah. You know you're hard carrying when you've done 12k. You know you're hard carrying when you've done 
10 kills in World of Tanks. You know you're hard carrying when you've got a 1 versus 8 scenario into a 1 versus 1. But you know you've got your work cut out for you when you've had to carry so hard that you have no ammunition left in the tank. Galaxian here has got their work cut out for them. Where's the STA-1 going to come from? Are they going to come from the east? Are they going to come from below? I like Galaxian's tactic here. What they're doing is they're pointing their gun up the slope to try and, I guess, threaten the STA-1, or at least have their turret armor to bounce the STA-1 if they come from above, but also have their hull armor pointed towards where they want to ram. I guess what they're doing is hoping that the STA-1 is going to come from down below. If they get the proxy spot as the STA-1 comes around the corner, they can turn their turret and hopefully ram for victory. Ramming speed is what maybe the call is going to be here in this game. And also, this still allows Galaxian to spot the STA-1 if they're going to come from up there. And well, you know what? If the STA-1 comes from the north, there's nothing really too much you can do in that scenario. Alright, I'm going to leave the view now. Now, I'm not going to show you around. We're going to show you exactly what Galaxian was thinking and what Galaxian was doing inside this battle here. And that is clearly focused on the tunnel. The tunnel which they managed to get through to be able to save the battle against the Indian Panzer, even ramming the German medium tank to death to be able to interrupt the cap here and secure their pools medal. But a pools medal will only be a consolation prize in the possibility that Galaxian is competing for the one that everybody wants, the Kolobanov's medal, for standing alone against at least five opponents, in this case, eight opponents. It is absolutely tense right now. You could cut the atmosphere with a knife. It is so thick. It is palpable how much tension I have, even though I know what the result is going to be, considering that I, I'm watching this, so I can only imagine what it's all like for you at home now on YouTube. I hope you all enjoy this one, as the battle is starting to reach its crescendo now, with 42 seconds left. Galaxian, rock solid, nerves of steel. Mouse not shaking, arms not spaghetti in this situation, heart pumping full force right now, probably up into the uh, the high the high 150s maybe in this kind of a situation, who knows, or maybe dead cool, dead controlled, with 20 seconds left on the game now, Galaxian still looking to the left, looking to the right, if the SJ1 comes into the cap circle, they will be able to see, so 10 seconds left, 9, 8, Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and the STA won't get spotted from above, from behind, misses the shot on the back, and Galaxian just evades and survives. Oh my lord, you could not script the drama in this battle. Galaxian, congratulations to you on this absolute mammoth game of World of Tanks, irrelevant of how overpowered this vehicle is, irrelevant of how nice this matchup was without artillery. This was as hard as you could possibly carry in World of Tanks, and this was one of the most exciting games that I have ever seen in my 10 years of playing this battle, or playing this game even. This battle was! I loved everything you did in this game, fighting to the very last round. I loved the fact that you had to get a ram kill, and I loved the fact that you were thinking about what can you possibly do to set your vehicle up at the end to be able to have the highest chance of being able to win. It was a beautiful thing to watch, and I was in awe of your gameplay in this battle. Congratulations to you, mate. So an ace tanker here, as you would expect, for 1,772 base experience and a high caliber for 12,000 damage. Galaxian also gets the one that everybody wants, the Kolobanov's medal for standing alone against at least five opponents, in this case eight. A pools medal for those ten frags, a defender medal for protecting the cap circle, an invader medal for taking the cap circle afterwards, and a steel wall for blocking enough damage to destroy this vehicle three times over. And because Galaxian did not load full gold and took about a third premium rounds here, of which they penetrated all of them, they actually managed to make a profit even after resupplying everything. So, Galaxian, thank you so much for your epic gameplay, and thank you so much for uploading it onto the What Replays website for the community to enjoy. I hope you felt that I did your epic game the justice that it deserved. 
Anyway, ladies and gents, boys and girls, that's it for today. Uh, if you enjoyed this one, give it a thumbs up. If you hated it, give it a thumbs down. And let me know what you think about the AMX M454 in the comments down below. I personally actually hate it. I think it's one of the most disgusting metas in the game right now as to how boring and frontal this vehicle is. It kind of feels as if the T125, back when the T125 didn't even have a weak point on top. But let me know what you think in the comments. And as always, thank you so much for watching. You've been epic and hopefully I'll see you soon.